Okay, a one fall 15 minute time limit match. Introducing on the right of your screen at 197 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, Pat Hutchinson. Going against him from Japan, 227 pounds, Tojo Yamamoto. This match one fall, 15 minute time limit. Referee, Jerry Calhoun. Sunny left in the world. Okay, yeah, we're ready for the bell time. Here we go. Lance, I got a couple of things I'd like to say. Would you like to sit out here with me? Uh, I have got to leave. Hey, you got to catch Okay. <laughs> Tojo Yamamoto, Pat Hutchins, and oh, Mission Dave, Shop. Uh, yes, Sonny? Let me tell you something. I gave up a lot of time and a lot of pride to make a man out of Rick Martin. Rick Martin, Terry, to go the other way and not want to listen to me. I merely tried to disappoint Rick Martin. The way the thing's supposed to be. See? When people come out and take it on their own, they interfere in Sunday King's business, they don't really know. I'd say it's time on top of time, but I would always rule a wrestling profession. Somewhere along the line, I'll say it. Because I put a lot of time into this model. Now, I am regrouping. I'm reorganizing. And I'm making my move. And I am going to run the wrestling business exactly the way I've ran it when I was here before. I'm not going to stand around and waste my time with people like Rick Martin and any of these other guys you got back there. I try to help all these guys, every one of them. Steve Regal, Hector Guerrero. Uh, I, spend, I spend a lot of time, and Big Red, of all people, come out and stick his nose in my business. A man like this man in the ring right here, Tojo Yamamoto. Yes, indeed. This is the man that knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know, he taught Jared Jared everything he knows. And how he taught Jared Jared what Jared right. Jared knows is by discipline. I even heard that he do it with a break. That's it. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's the abdominal grab that just ended it there by Tojo. You will see this on a lot of people. You will see this on a lot of people because Sonny King is going to make the move. And like I said, I'm reorganizing it and it's going to be done right in the middle of the day. You'll find out. Okay, Sonny, I, I hear, hear what you're saying there. Right. I'll tell you. The abdominal grab is what uh, wrapped it up there. We didn't really get a chance to, uh, to commentate much on the match. Only went two minutes, six seconds there. The abdominal grab by Tojo Yamamoto defeats Pat Hutchinson. So that's it for the first one. The official winner in two minutes, six seconds, Tojo Yamamoto. Let's go over to Lance right now. Okay. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. The Tojo hadn't gotten any more gentle since the last time that we had him on championship wrestling. He goes out with that smile upon his face, feeling mighty uh, happy about his win in that instance over Pat Hutchinson. Pat's learning the hard way. Yeah, here they come out here. Big Red Rick Morton. Uh, I guess you were aware of what happened in there with Joe. You saw him laying it on Pat Hutchinson. Uh, Rick, the last time that we saw you on Championship Wrestling, I know it's not a pleasant subject to bring up, but I got to say, we uh, saw... Uh, Sonny King kind of abused you and as a matter of fact slapped you around out here a good bit and I know it was a source of embarrassment for you. Yeah, yes it was. You know, Sonny King he's a tough man. You know, I could probably wrestle him for 10 years. One-on-one, you know, on one, I doubt if I can beat him. But one thing, any man that slaps me, he's got to fight. I don't care who he is and how bad he is. I think you showed him that, that you weren't backing up from him uh, just because he's big as he is. Well, you know, after he slaps me, you know, what can I do? You know, any, any man that slaps me, he's got to fight. I don't care, one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two, -two, he's got to fight. Well, you know. it, um, it was a situation that we were kind of sorry. Hey, come on, Tojo. Don't start. Hey, Sonny. Now, you've already been out here. Hey, come on, Sonny. You're starting that stuff again. Tojo. Sonny. Turn it slow, man. You're crazy. Oh, 
I'm going to get out of there right now. Well, you guys just get on out of here. Now, Sonny, there's no excuse for that kind of stuff out here. You come, come here, out, boy. Yeah, you, don't, come here, boy. Don't, don't start that come here, come boy. Here, boy stuff. Come here, boy. Get out of there, last Russell. Come here, boy. Hey, come, come on, here. Sonny. Will you please just get out the door? Come here. I'm giving you your last chance, boy. I'm giving you your last chance. I ain't got nothing to do with you. I said I want to talk to you, boy. You better listen to me. You better listen. Hey, all right, Sonny. Now you're done. Get out of the way, Lance Russell. Are you better listen or not? Are you better listen? Jerry, get it. Yeah. Are you going to listen? Are you going to listen? Get it on time. Are you going to listen? Are you going to get it on Come on, Sonny. Let's uh, take time out right now. We'll be back uh, in just a moment. I got enough trouble. Don't you start it. Yeah, we'll have a chair. We'll get the chair. Okay. All right. This match is going to be a one fall, 15 minute time limit match. Introducing the from people about how many cards and letters you received demanding that they see the CWA World Heavyweight Champion wrestle here on TV. Tell them about it. Don't be ashamed. Let's let's just do the introductions and get the match underway. The chair is on the way for Jimmy Hart. As we were saying, introducing from Union City, Tennessee, at 221 pounds, Coco Ware, and going against him, the CWA Heavyweight Champion, the King. Jerry Lawler from Memphis, Tennessee at 228 pounds. One fall, 15-minute time limit, non-title match. Referee is Jerry Calhoun. Okay, one fall, 15 minutes. Coco, an opportunity for him to make an impressive showing. If he can, of course, it will certainly help his reputation. All right, Jerry. Referee Jerry Calhoun warning uh, Hart about staying in the chair and we're off and running on a one fall 15 minute time limit bout. Remember, we've got a big Southern Tag Team Championship match coming up when the Assassins defend against the former champions, Hector Guerrero and Steve Regal. Coco Ware, Union City, Tennessee. In a non-title effort, against the very confident CWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jerry the King Lawler. Boy, that is some handsome belt, though, isn't it? That is a good-looking belt, yeah. World Heavyweight title. Lawler rushing Coco back. Nice, clean break. Surprised Coco more than hit anybody, I think. <laughs> Coco, the jumping jack, great drop kick. He'll need it all, goes with a top wrist lock on Lawler. And Lawler moves underneath for the leverage, takes him over the hip and down. That cheerleader Jimmy Hart there. Yeah, boy, he, he's in there really springing it out. Come on, King, see that? Lawler now with a top wrist lock, and Coco returns the favor. He learns and learns fast. Oh, Lord. Scratch that. He pulled my hair. Crowd getting on his case. Referee Jerry Calhoun trying to say, will you let me referee? referee? I, can, uh, I can see. You handle the wrestling, I'll handle the referee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're at the two-minute mark. As usual, Lawler handling the talking as he berates the crowd out there. Two minutes in, we got 13 minutes to go in this non-title. About beautiful reversal by uh, Coco. Goes with a wrist. And really snap 
Hits that arm. Coco staying away at a good distance from Lawler where he can't hit him with that fist of his. Ooh, but he got him with a big elbow and misses as he drops on him with a right hand. Super crowd here today, and we'll, uh, if we have an opportunity on championship wrestling, we'll tell you all about how to write for tickets if we have time, but we've got a big championship match coming up with the Assassins defending against former champs Regal and Guerrero. Looking forward to that one. Coco caught in a standing side headlock. Yeah, Lawler starts to wind it up. Bears Coco over and down on the deck. Coco's right shoulder was up. Now it's down. Now it's up. Referee Jerry Calhoun caught between trying to figure out when to go with the first count if it does go down. Not a good hold for a pin. You'll see very few pins with a headlock because it's so Sapping easy to roll that hand. shoulder up. Yeah, right. right. But it will, in fact, sap some of that strength out of you. Coco using that upper body strength to pry Lawler's head back, trying to get him in a position, and he does to a head scissor. It's another one of those sapping holes that uh, drains the energy your opponent has to try to figure out how to get out of it without pulling his ears off. While it takes some pressure to exert the uh, scissor, it takes a lot more exertion to try to figure out how, and <laughs> look at him. Scooting Lawler's head along the canvas as Jerry tried to get his feet under him to walk his way out of it. Coco uh, just kept backing up on it. Lawler now digging in to go again. Coco with a headstand by Lawler. And Lawler gets out, misses as he jumped up to go for a side headlock on Coco. 4.45 gone in this one. Coming up on the five minute mark. So we're about one-third the way through the time limit on this match. Lawler calling Jimmy Hart over. Go out and get me a cannon. I'm having a little <laughs> trouble with this guy. I wouldn't doubt that at all, yeah. Coco gets the side headlock standing. Lawler with the height advantage makes it more difficult to hold, but Coco is strong. And Lawler takes him right out of it in his own inimitable fashion. Who was it brought up hair pulling first? Yeah. Yeah. He must have had that in mind when he did. There again, while the referee trying to keep Hart down in his chair. Hart is a jumping jack in the chair, as opposed to, you remember, Gorgeous George uh, used to walk a lot, man. He was all over the place. Jimmy just bounces up and down in there, as uh, we said, like a cheerleader. Lawler bars the arm, has it up rather tight at the shoulder. And he takes Coco back down. Don't smile. Nothing to be proud of with that. Reached up and grabbed a hair and took him back while the referee was rapping with Jimmy Hart. We're very close to seven minutes in this one. 6.55 right now. Well, we're not too far from the halfway point. And Coco hanging there, there good with the world heavyweight champion. Lawler dropping with the elbow on shoulder. Southern Tag Belts on the line right here on Championship Wrestling this very day. 
That's a little later. Referee checks with Coco as Lawler bending back, putting all of that 230. Uh oh! Looks like from here he was separating the fingers. Yep, the crowd on that side indicating that they saw it the same way. Lawler extending a warning to Coco about balling the fist up. Yeah, I see it. Coco where? Puts it Pops him. He did not heed the warning from the great king. Coco nail Lawler. This is a big right. Oh, Coco got it. There, a genuine Coco butt. Where with a shoulder to the midsection. Goes at him again. He whips him. Turnbuckle. And Coco, a uh, little over anxious, slammed a shoulder into one of the turnbuckles. Suplex. Pounds him down. Lawler from across the ring on the rope. Flies three-fourths of the way across, nails Coco, and gets a three-count. Lawler's going to have his hand raised in victory in there. Whole thing went downhill when Coco got a little anxious, Dave, and slammed that shoulder into the turnbuckle. Went after him one time too many. 9.02 was the time as Lawler gets it. Doggone good matches. Jerry Lawler comes out victorious over Coco Ware. Non-title match. Lawler with that huge CWA belt. Comes out of the ring a winner. And we do, in fact, have a lot more wrestling action coming up for you. And it'll all be in here with a Southern Tag Team title championship. Right, okay, Jimmy. Right after we take time out for this. But I don't care what you say about it. He does, in fact, have that world heavyweight title. And I remember, in particular, the day we were at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, when he went against superstar Billy Graham and pulled the upset of the decade as he defeated Graham for that title and the scene following that match uh, looked something as a matter of fact like looked exactly like this come to think of it and Mike thank you they are here Jerry Lawler the new CWA world heavyweight champion Jerry Okay, the honest truth is, I never thought I would really be standing here and you were the world title. Didn't I tell you you would? Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell everybody that I would be the world champion? And you're looking at it. You got to eat your words. A lot of people got to eat their words. Everybody's got to eat their words because I am the champion, baby. Look at it. Okay, okay. Listen. Got to ask you, you got the world heavyweight title. You did what you said you were going to do. Now, you also hold the southern heavyweight title. Are you going to relinquish it and concentrate only on the world heavyweight? <laughs> oh, no, baby. Hey, you hear what he asked me? Am I going to relinquish the southern heavyweight title? No, I ain't relinquishing nothing. Let me tell you something. One title may be enough for some people, but not for me, because I'm going to get it all. And you know why? Because I'm good enough to have them all. Let me just make a little commercial. We got time for a little commercial message? Let me tell all you chumps out there, all of you wrestlers, 
Everybody that's in earshot, send your pictures, send your applications to me because I'm the world champion, I'm the southern champion, I'm looking for a partner and I'm going to be the world tag team champion. So just send your pictures, send your applications to the king, I'm looking for a partner. You girls, send me your pictures too, I want to see what your dogs look like out there, baby. Eat your heart out, Russell. Before you get into the tag thing, Put it on there. I, just, I just was down with superstar Billy Graham, he is incensed, he is crazy that he cannot get a return bout with you for that world. Superstar battle. Billy Graham was a chump. Superstar Billy Graham was overrated. I didn't hardly break a sweat beating him. I don't want no more Superstar Billy Graham. He's going to have to get in a long line if he wants another shot at his when, belt. When Let me it, tell you something. Let me tell you something. Don't stand there. I'm the world champion, man. Right. You just stand there and listen to me. Nick Buckwinkle, he's the one that calls himself a champion, too. That's who I want. Billy Graham's a chump. I'm through with him. I want Nick Buckwinkle. Tell hey, hey, when in, when in the bout did you feel like that you had the title? When, did, when did I feel like I had it won? About two and a half weeks ago when I signed the contract. I knew I could beat Billy Graham. He's a has-been. He's washed up. You don't want no more of me, Billy Graham. No, baby. I'm the Jerry the King Lawler, he is the CWA World Heavyweight Champion. Lance Russell from Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Russell, you're a has-been, too. <laughs> Glorious night for Lawler, as a matter of fact, and the culmination of a lot of conversation. I'll say that at least. And another culmination is coming up, and that is the fact that for the very first time, CWA champ Jerry Lawler will be meeting Monday night in the Coliseum the AWA champ hey. Nick Bockwinkle right. to decide will end up with one champion out of it. That's what Lawler wanted. I think there's a lot of people who wanted Nick Bockwinkle uh, not backing up from Lawler by any right. means. Boy, I'll tell you what, he is some kind of champion. That'll be coming up Monday night, title against title, and it should be a good one down there. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to troop around front here. I want to get out here where I'll have the opportunity to introduce a couple of guys that you have not previously met face to face on uh, our championship wrestling. You introduced, uh, were introduced to him on tape last week, Billy Robinson. Billy, good to have you out, and Paul Ellering. I, 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 I was just saying that the folks got a chance to see Paul and Billy in action last week with the, uh, with the tape. This is our first chance to have you here, and I got to tell you, it is a real pleasure. I said it before, you're a wrestler's wrestler. Everybody knows that. It's a real pleasure to have well, you here. Well, thank Billy. you, Lance. I want to say it's a pleasure to meet you. I've been wanting to meet you. You're famous around the world. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul uh, from uh, Minnesota, Melrose, Minnesota, and, and Billy from Manchester, England. And, uh, Billy, I know that... Uh, the reputation of being a wrestler's wrestler has some of the drawbacks in there because you run into some yahoos like we had. I'm sorry about the little activity we had earlier well, in there. But all I can say is that I'm out to wrestle. I want to prove myself as one of the top wrestlers in the world and get a crack at the world championship. And what people call me or what people scream and shout doesn't make any difference. I am, I'm not a talking man. I prefer that action speak loud in words and I get in the ring and I wrestle. That's all I'm here to do. You, you are a real businessman in that ring. I've had an opportunity to see you a couple of times. You've just been in the area about a week or so. And uh, 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 Billy, i got to ask you, do you ever really get mad? <laughs> oh, I can see the occasion where one uh, would lose one's temper, but that's at a disadvantage. That puts you at a disadvantage. If you lose your temper and uh, get in there and you forget what you've been trained to do, I believe that I'm a, a machine in a way, and uh, if the machine gets out of cogs and the cogs get a bit crazy, then I can make mistakes, and I don't intend to make mistakes. <laughs> he doesn't make very many of them. As a matter of fact, you don't make too many of them playing cribbage either. You're dog <laughs> a cribbage player too, Billy Robinson. And Paul... Uh, uh, by golly, I'll tell you, we saw that we saw that tape of you last week. I have not had an opportunity. We're going to get our first look on championship wrestling. Welcome to the territory. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, I've uh, I've traveled over the country and over the world, and uh, there's a uh, Memphis, and the Memphis area has a big reputation for wrestling. That's why I've decided to come here. I've came here, and uh, I'm from a small town, and. And uh, my dad always told me when I was young, he said, Paul, you work hard and, and you're going to get what you work for. And I've worked hard and uh, I've come here and I want to win the, the world championship right here in Memphis. Yeah, well, Lance, I want to cut in here. This guy is very, very modest. We have trained together before. 
And this man broke the world record of the deadlift. And he doesn't tell about what he can do or what he has done. And that's why I appreciate the man. The man has broken the world record at the deadlift, and he's one of the strongest men in the country at his mm. weight. Yeah. You held uh, uh, the world record, uh, uh, Paul, at 745 and a quarter pounds for a deadlift, right? Well, uh, that's right, and I thank Billy for saying that. He's a, he's a great champion wrestler, and uh, he's never uh, beside himself to always uh, say a good word about another fellow wrestler. Well, I, I did set the world record, and I worked very hard to do it. And, uh, you were also the NCAA weightlifting champion, were you not? That's right, and uh, I did these. Uh, these goals were all goals of mine to build myself up to become a professional wrestler. I took up weightlifting, but I had a very extensive amateur wrestling career. But I had to gain some size, so I took up weightlifting, and along the way, I... I did become the NCAA wrestling champion, and I did set a world record. My golly, I'll tell you what. <laughs> and there's no question he built a frame in there. Paul, uh, again, delighted to have you here. We'd like to see you in action right here. And, Billy, I'm going to ask you, sometimes uh, when I get in there and I give them my country connotation of what the hold is, I don't exactly call them by the right name. Would you sit down with me? And, I would love to, and I hope the people can understand my accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Paul. Good luck Thank to you. you. And here we're going to be looking forward to seeing you around here. Billy Robinson, uh, if you'll come around here, Billy, and uh, take Dave's chair, and he'll do the official introductions, and we'll be uh, ready to get it on with action, and we'll have Billy Robinson as our guest uh, as our guest, Billy, you won the British Empire Championship at uh, 17 years of age, didn't you? Which is kind of oh, an incredible... Was, no, I, I won the British Amateur title at 17, and then I won the European when I was 18 years old, and I turned pro, and, uh, you know, I, I come from a very extensive background of amateur wrestling, and I always thought an amateur wrestling was the toughest man around, and that's until I went to a professional gymnasium, and they really showed me what it was. <laughs> Let's get Dave in the introductions, and we'll have a chance to see Paul in action. It's one fall, 15-minute time limit match, introducing from parts on known 223 pounds the avenger and going against him on the right of your screen from melrose minnesota 235 pounds paul ellering this match one fall 15 minute time limit referee jerry calhoun Milton. okay we're you. off and running uh, Billy Robinson. Billy, if you will, just help us out on some of the moves and things. See the okay. Avengers. Well, that was a quick reverse into yes. a full Nelson, and uh, it took Paul by surprise. Obviously, this man has got a lot of ability, and he, he looks very strong. Well, you watch Paul now. He's going to use his strength, I think, to get out of the car. <laughs> that talks for itself. <laughs> Look at those legs. Right. That was a single leg drop. Now, he's trying to get the, um, the um, leverage on the ankle to keep his man pinned down there. This tires the man out. This is a very tiring position for the man underneath. Oh, Paul knows. Oh, well, that's... The Avenger using a rope to pull himself over there and get a, get a break on it. I can't understand that. If you come out to wrestle, you should wrestle. Never mind trying to get out of the ring or use ta different tactics and just the rules. Paul Ellering facing you right there. Uh, the Avenger into a yeah. standing side headlock on him. That's quite right. That's a side headlock or a chantry. Oh, just look at the power of that. Good night. He picked the Avenger straight up in the air, held him out with his arms and tossed him like you would a beach ball. You can understand where he gets his power from now. Oh. Huh? That's the Avenger who has the task of going against yeah. Paul Ellering. If you notice how cool Paul is. Oh, the Chris crossing for Prince it's a double leg takedown. He's got the ankle hook there. That was a brilliant move, actually, by Paul. Have you noticed how cool he is when he starts? He takes his time. He doesn't get uh, perturbed at all. Now he's riding the man. The man is trying to switch out, but Paul's too strong, and he's holding it. Beautiful leverage and position. Staying right on top of him, always right. in control in there. Our guest commentator is uh, Billy Robinson. Sitting in with us talking about a match between Paul Ellering on the right and the Avenger on the left. One fall, 15 minute time on that bout. Another test each other for the position, and Paul went in for the leg again. Beautiful. Now, this is what's known as a ride. He's riding the man. He's just keeping his weight on. He's waiting for that man to move, and then Paul is going to take advantage of it. He's riding him down with the arm. Beautiful position. One. Oops. trying to sit out on him, but Paul just stays right in the control position. 
He's got the legs trapped there, now with a figure. That's nice to see a clean break when a man abides by the rules. Now, what was that? I didn't see it from the far side from me. Yeah, it looked like, uh, to me, the Avenger went to the eyes, which uh, now he slams his head into a turnbuckle. He's not having any success trying to out-wrestle it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Paul Ellery can return it in kind if he's provoked. Just look at the power of this man. Oh, it's a stomach throw. Good like stomach throw or a monkey flip. Throws him into the ropes. A backdrop. Oh. It's going for a side suplex by the look of it. Whoa. Beautiful. That's a Greco Roman move. Straight up in the air, Paul Ellering on a look at that. Oh, a tummy drop. Beautiful. I don't think that has to be commentated on I me. Mean. <laughs> I think you're right, Billy Robinson. Paul Ellering, with his hand raised in the air, comes up with a uh, good, solid victory over the Avenger, who, uh, when he saw he could not wrestle him, what he did was uh, resort to some other tactics in there, which didn't net him any more than, uh, than the wrestling effort on it. How long was it, Davey? Three minutes and 42 seconds, not long. He got it in 340. That wasn't very long, as a matter of fact, Billy. If you're not in a hurry, please stay with us. We'd like to show the folks another side of Billy Robinson. Okay, here. I would love to stay around. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. We'll be back, as a matter of fact, with Billy in just a moment. This is uh, Billy Robinson, and <laughs> some of you folks have had the opportunity, and some of you are saying, Billy who? Billy who? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Billy. It's Billy Robinson. Billy. Uh, uh, U European champion, British Empire champ, uh, stack of credentials that go back a long, long way into uh, amateur wrestling. We're already on the tape. Billy, we uh, we had a chance last week to see you in in, in a, uh, a match. It was a most interesting one, but I think that something that will be uh, even more interesting, we'll see you in a handicap match where you came in. I know you told promoter Jerry Jarrett, I want to establish, get ready, and take as many shots as I can to become uh, a title contender for the World Heavyweight Champion. So you really bit it off, and you said, I'll take Ferris and Latham on in a handicap match in there. Well, I asked the promoter, would he put me in this area? And he obviously knew of me, and I told him my credentials, and he said, well, I'm going to have to test you and prove you, and uh, will you wrestle in a handicap man against these two men? I said, I will wrestle anybody, any place to prove myself, and if that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. So that's what Boy, happened. did you. Let's take a look right now. This was at the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee. Billy Robinson in a handicap match against Ferris and Latham. Let's listen to it as it happened. Picked him up, waist blocked him, took him to Paul Nelson over the shoulder, and twisted their ears up with those feet, and there's a tag on Larry Now He came to the corner. I think he'll tag out to Latham. Shook his head at him. 
I think it's Im important to point out here, Paul, uh, Billy, that we have uh, seen on, on several occasions that defensive ability of yours, too, so that it does not let your opponent get the upper hand uh, in it. So it's as important, I would think, as the defensive. <laughs> it certainly is. I want to give credit to these two men. They, they uh, wrestled a very technical match. They uh, tried to out-wrestle me. They tried to keep within the rules to an extent. And they, but they weren't just coming in going wild. They just backed up and they tried to pick their moves off as they could get them. You know, and when they did throw moves, obviously I'm not going to allow myself to be hit, and I, I blocked it. I, you know, I was lucky, maybe. And I think, um, I think that, uh, for instance, Larry Latham, who was in the ring with you right now, it was frustrating because uh, everything that uh, Larry had used. Look at this. Explain this to us. Well, that's a double arm trap, and I reverse, it, reverse him to get a, a pinfall. But this man uh, managed to get out of it, which is. You know, great on his part. I've got to give him full credit for it. I've beaten a lot of men with that particular move. Boy, and I'll tell you, you it, it shows the leg power that Billy Robinson has, too, because you rotated him just like you were rolling a ball around there on your legs, and Larry comes in at around 226, 225, somewhere in there. Yeah, but lunch, you know, wrestling is physical chess, and uh, I did put the emphasis on the hands and then switch to the legs, and it kind of got him off guard a little bit. Let's go back and listen to the action as it happened. Top with a wrist lock. And Robinson takes Latham right down to the floor. We're right at the nine-minute mark in action. 51 minutes to wrestle. Robinson hadn't even broken a sweat yet with Larry Latham and Wayne Ferris. And now Latham has a leg dive. Look at this. Robinson right back and took him over. Latham went with a good single leg dive, but uh, Robinson was out of it in a hurry. Suplex from Robinson. Latham going to sandwich him with Ferris. Now there's a waist lock from Ferris who slips around behind on Robinson. Robinson leaning. Ferris hanging on. Robinson goes right straight to it. Trying to separate those hands of Wayne Ferris. And look at Robinson. Fires both elbows back and puts Ferris right down on his face. It's turned quickly into a hammer lock by Latham. And with that foot, but Latham kicks off. And look at the cartwheel through the rope. Billy Robinson goes into a front face lock, but not for long as Latham takes loose and fires a right hand. Whips in, backdrop on Robinson. He's shoved in. Oh, beauty. Hip tossed him right over and down. He really put Latham down on the deck. Reaches out, grabs the leg, and tips him over. And referee Paul Morton coming over. He was looking around at the ring, but he saw. Him. There's there's something you always gotta look out for when you're on guys like that. It's uh, Davis reached out and we can see it very clearly. He just barely caught yeah, his foot. Well, I was certainly wasn't expecting that, and, and uh, these men try to give me a lot of punishment here. And at the time, I was just uh, I took a heavy fall on the head. And now they're working to get 
a big elbow. Robinson gone with a big elbow. He's on the rope. Barrett. Nah, they're both. Double whip. Double whip. Double backdrop and Robinson down. Barris is the lead. They didn't want to play it according to the rules where it was a tag situation. They wanted the two on one because they saw they weren't that much having much luck with you on a one on one. <laughs> Well, I'm not laughing now. You know, this is the first time I got the chance to see it. And, uh... Latham and Ferris both using uh, the boots pounding play right there. He's down caught in between them. Don't go away. Keep your eye on Billy Robinson. Latham grabs the hair and delivers a right. Continuing with their pounding tactics. Now, there's that defense they were talking about a little bit. Give you a chance to clear your head in there and yeah, just just defending. This qualification with Davis up on the ring edge and look at it was, it was a disqualification when Davis came up in there, but you didn't let it go at that. You wanted to let him know about Billy Robinson. <laughs> Beautiful. Took him right over the top rope on the outside. You know, they didn't come back in. I was actually, I was getting rather mad. Uh, I saw that I had this man down, and I thought, well, he's the man that tripped me. This is the man I want to get hold of. He went out of there in a hurry, I'll say for a fact. Okay. That was the action that took place in a handicap match. The winner, Billy Robinson. Billy, we've got a uh, Southern Tag Championship match. It's delightful to have you out here. Would you stay and see the Assassins defend against Steve Regal and Hector Guerrero? I would love to. Thank you very love much. It. Sit right there. We'll be back with action in just a moment. All 60 minute time limit. Introducing, at a total of 429 pounds, the challengers for the belts, from Mexico City, Mexico, Hector Guerrero. From Indianapolis, Indiana, Steve Regal. And the champions at 590 pounds total weight from parts unknown, the Assassins. This is an AWA Southern Tag Team Championship match. One fall, 60 minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Billy Robinson uh, sitting in as our guest commentator here on this championship. Mike, here's a classic example of, of size against speed. Hector and uh, Steve Regal with a great speed. Uh oh What is this? Before they ever got done, the assassin jumped him from behind as Hector was getting the uh, jacket off. No, I can't understand this whatsoever. These two masked men have got a lot of wrestling ability, and they can wrestle. Why do they just come out and wrestle? Well, that is not their nature. They, uh, they've they got the size, as you pointed out, they can wrestle. But they've also got that mean streak that they've always got to prove to somebody that they can hurt somebody. They just, I, I tell you what, we've seen them for a couple of years, and uh, they just want to do that. They want to hurt somebody. They are the Southern Tag Champions, a rather inauspicious start. For, uh, Guerrero seems to be in, a, in trouble here. Yes. Now look at that. He's holding them all up with a double wrist lock behind the back. I know that is very, very painful. Oh! oh. With the arm up behind, he slammed him on it, Billy. Mm -hmm. As a tag, the other uh, assassin, and Guerrero never really had a chance to get off to an even start. You've got to give credit, though. That was a brilliant move. Now, they're both working this arm, obviously, to try and work him. Oh, look at that. Power oh. slam. Oh. Crowd on Hector's side, trying to help him get stirred up, but he's never had a chance so far. They got him down before it started, and he uh, has been punished ever since. As they... He's got the pressure on the wrist there, and he's definitely punishing the arm. Yeah, that's the arm that he had doubled up behind him on that power slam he drove him into the deck with. Heck, just trying to use the headbutt to get out of it. But... On the exchange, they double team and Hector. He seems to be in a bad way here. There's an He's definitely hurt. Again. 
drops down on the arm. Now picks Hector up. Oh, a shoulder breaker. The size of this man. Look at the fight in this boy. He's really trying. Now he's got a double re wrist lock arm bar on. Hector's fighting back. What he really needs is if he can get away, he needs to tag Steve Regal and get himself a little rest in there. He should free that hold right now. One of them was holding, the other one was jamming with The pressure feet. on the wrist. Look now, look at He's getting the pressure on the wrist, on the elbow, and straight through to the shoulder. Look at that. No, 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 no. No. Oh. Now this man's hurt here. He's definitely hurt. That's a deliberate way not to beat a man. He's trying to break an injury. The man should be stopped. They should stop the match, Lance. Well, that man's hurt. I'm telling you, they should sure, stop the match. Sure. Stop yeah. the match. Okay. And he's still holding on to the arm in there. They're still trying to put punish, but the bout is going to be stopped. And Hector Guerrero, Billy Robinson going up in the ring. They are just unnecessarily. They caught. Guerrero with his arm the opposite way and Billy Robinson going in to help take some of the pressure off. Uh, the belts will remain, of course, with the assassins, but a very wise decision on, uh, on the referee's part. Billy Robinson called it over here when he said the bout should have been stopped because they had the arm straightened out bent and he went with that full weight on Guerrero right at the elbow and pulled it back. Trying to get Hector out now. So an unfortunate uh, challenge from Regal and, and Guerrero in there. Thank you, Billy. Don't it, it, thank me. Don't thank me at all. I don't raise my voice, but I want to tell you that was a deliberate move. You know, you can go in the ring and you can put punishing holes on to beat a man or to make him submit, but definitely not. That was a deliberate move to break a man's arm, to put him out of wrestling to Kevin. They should be barred. If I had anything to do it, these men would Just not be here. Just a second. Just a second here. Get your belt. Listen. We'll have to tell these people exactly the way it is. Wrestling's a tough sport, Robinson. And when the top get going, we know exactly when it becomes the ultimate thing. And your interference in our match, don't you say you oh. Oh. <laughs> Alcohol or something else. Take a break. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Um, in there. Uh, huh? before, you, before you start on the Memphis card, uh, Jerry asked me to remind everybody again that uh, this week, general admission tickets will be $2, and children under 10 admitted to general admission free. This when week again. Accompanied by an adult. Yeah. Yeah. This is through the entire uh, month of December, right. as a matter of fact. Kind of Christmas present. Oh, let me see how Billy's uh, getting along here. We want to give it, Billy. Did you? Did they get him flushed out? Okay? Oh, huh? I know it was alcohol. Listen, I, I don't. Smell. I don't give a damn about. I want to tell you one thing now. When I talk about fighting the people coming out here to wrestle or to maim a man or to cripple a man, this is what they're doing. I said that. I am a wrestler. You know. When it comes to eyesight, eyesight is so precious. Wrestling is my life, and when I was a little boy, I've done nothing but wrestle. I love wrestling, and when I'm 90 years old, if I live that long, I'll be teaching wrestling. And I wouldn't, through a wrestlers like these, I got a finger in my eye, and the man tried to pull my eye out. I was five months, two surgeries, and I nearly had to finish wrestling altogether. 
But I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you, I'll get these men. And as a matter of fact, when I came down here, promoter Jerry Jarrett said to me, he said, Billy, I'll comply with anything that you want, any matches you want. Well, I'm demanding a match. I'm demanding a match now from Jerry Jarrett, promoter Jerry Jarrett. I want to see if he's a man of his word or not. I want those two men in the ring, either one at a time or two at a time. I don't give a... Whatever I want to say is this, that Jerry Jarrett, if he's a man of his word, he'll get me that match. I want the match. I'll show you what a fight is. You want to see a fight? You want to see a fight? I want to tell you. Jerry is the only one who can make any changes in the matches. And that. I don't so care who him. makes the changes. Get the man here now and see if he's a man of his word. Well, the bouts as you know are set for monday night in there and you're not scheduled with the assassins uh and that is okay jerry billy, billy i told you I'd, i would cooperate and and i will i'll keep my word i was talking about getting matches for you to get a title defense let me but. cut in there i don't want to forget the championship matches forget any title matches i want these men that's what I want, and I want you to get them for me. All right. Well, I can do that now, so I'll, we, we can change the card. Who do you you have to have a, a partner? Who do you want as a partner? Who do I want as a partner? I'll tell you. The only man that I know down here is Paul Ellering. I know that that man will be behind me in the corner, and he's a great partner. I want Paul Ellering as my partner. Let's. That's the uh, the schedule. Memphis. Uh, All right. Monty, put Coco up here against the Destroyer, and put. Uh, Put Billy in Coco's place. Okay, okay Billy. I'll okay, keep so my it, word it is set. Give okay, me a hand on it. I'm saying no get, more. Get the me. eyes, yeah. Okay. Okay. So as we were, uh, as we were saying, the guy, you know, when he speaks, boy, he speaks with a conviction that you just <laughs> know doggone well, Eddie. He's got a marvelous sense of humor, but uh, obviously there's none, no, no place none right, right now no. with what the assassins did. Uh, let's take a look at the action coming up uh, for a Monday night down at the Mid-South Coliseum. And that's when it will be Monday night. There will be some Sunday night matches and so forth, Sunday afternoon and all in the next few because it'll be jockeyed around with things going in the Coliseum. But this coming Monday night, bell time is 8 o'clock down there. And the action will get underway at that time. The ticket office will be open today all the way up to uh, 5 o'clock. It will be open all day on Monday so that you can get your tickets in advance. And the opening bout, it's going to be Steve Regal going against Ken Wayne in a single match in here. Uh, originally, Coco and Ellering were uh, in a non-title bout with the Assassins. That has been changed, so you'll remove the name Coco Ware and put Billy Robinson down there. Uh, so it'll be the Assassins against Paul Ellering and Billy Robinson. Then uh, Billy, who was scheduled to go, uh, promoter Jerry Jarrett said to uh, scratch it and put Coco Ware in the position of Billy Robinson. Then a tag match that'll have Rick Morton and Big Red going against Sonny King and Tojo Yamamoto. They already had a little bout a little bit earlier on the unofficial one. This one will be official in the ring. And the final event, <clears throat> the big main event, will be the AWA world title against the CWA world title. This will be Jerry the King Lawler, CWA champ, against Nick Bockwinkle, AWA champ. And I wanted to mention, Dave, that this particular one will be a 90-minute time limit. Now, these guys have bet twice before they have been in the ring for 60 minutes. Uh, Lawler very quick to point out that in an, in an extra five-minute time limit, which was not legal at all, that he beat Bockwinkle. But this will be a 90-minute title against title, and we're going to settle a question of the world heavyweight champion when Lawler meets Bockwinkle in there. Boy, what a night of action. Oh, yeah. All of that, plus the fact that uh, we're going to have uh, a $2 general admission ticket. We're going to have children under 10 when accompanied by a parent uh, coming in free to the general admission section. And so the action is going to be something. Lawler against Bockwinkle, the Assassins against uh, Billy Robinson and Paul Ellering, and all of it happening. You can get your tickets until 5 today and all day on Monday in there. And here he is. Well, letting things get a little out of hand out here today, aren't you? All right. Listen, I just want to say that uh, you got one of the things that you want, the championship. Now you've got an opportunity to have your title, the World Heavyweight title, Continental Wrestling Association against the 
AWA Nick Bockwinkle. And boy, I don't have to tell you how tough Bockwinkle is. Are you through, liver lips? <laughs> if you are, then let the king do a little talking. I'll tell you how tough Bockwinkle is. He's not tough enough, baby. He is not tough enough. Oh, he's tough. He's about this tough right here. But the king is this tough right here, baby. And I am going to be, after Monday night, the one and only world heavyweight champion. Isn't that great? One man is going to walk out of that ring Monday night at that Coliseum with two world championship belts. And you're looking at him right here. We, I'm the one. We made the uh, comment just a moment ago to Dave that the time limit has been extended That's to 90 right. minutes. 90 minutes. That's You've been, never been 90. That Nobody's has been a favorite tactic of Nick Bockwinkle. I wrestled that man twice in the past. He tried every move he knew of in that little feeble pea brain of his. He reached back and got something he didn't even know about. He tried everything he could. What are you looking at your watch for? Don't be looking at your watch when I'm out here, you goof. These people tune in to see me. These people tune in to hear me tell what I'm going to be doing to people like Bockwinkle. He tried everything he's ever known in, on me in the past, and he couldn't beat me. He couldn't pin my shoulders to the mat, and he realized that. So you know what he did? He stalled for time. He knew that that 60 minutes would finally be up. He couldn't beat the king, so he said, I'll try to outlast him. I'll try to get a draw, and I'll try to walk out of here with my belt still around my waist. And he did that twice. But 90 minutes come Monday night, that's an hour and a half. Do you realize it? it? 90 yeah. minutes, Nick Bockwinkle. You can't go that long, baby. It took me only 65 minutes to beat you last time I wrestled you, and it's not going to take me that long this time. The CWA World Heavyweight Champion against the AWA Champion. One man is going to walk out the World Heavyweight Champion. Once and for all, we're going to get it settled. Gotta, You're looking at him right I here. i got to say, it is a dream match to have the two champions going against each other. The 90-minute time limit is unbelievable, an hour and a half's worth of wrestling. It is going to be something that, as a matter of fact, I will tell you, I will be looking forward it's to it. It's a little. dream match. You yep. said it. Don't come down there looking like a nightmare. Dress up for a change, would you? <laughs> That's Jerry the King Lawler. And, uh... Heading out with his chief cheerleader, uh, Jimmy Hart. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought while you were shooting him, I would run around. around. I got caught there, Dave. <laughs> Listen, we, next week on our TV5 Studio Wrestling, we're early, early, right? Yeah. 10 o'clock yeah. next week. So I want to remind you, yes. Guy Coffee, huh? Yeah. Clarksdale, yeah. Mississippi, Thursday night. Clarksdale, Mississippi, Thursday night. Okay, that's dynamite. We'll be looking for action down at Clarksdale, 8 p.m. Thursday night in there. We're going to Christmas special. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment. Hey, Dave, it's the we unfortunate. Yeah. to provide an hour time limit for a yeah. championship match. And, and uh, I certainly weren't looking for Hector Guerrero, the stuff the assassins pulled on him. But I'll tell you what we do have uh, for um, those of you who were unable to see it. Uh, Title change is always big news. We do have some taped highlights of the match when Steve Regal and uh, Hector Guerrero were the champions, and they defended against the Mighty Assassins. Let's take a look at it right now. Southern Tag Team Championship match. The current champions, Hector Guerrero, Steve Regal, a very exciting team. Ah, there's Regal underneath going against the Assassins. But not for long. Mm. The big Assassin firing Regal into the corner. But look at Steve slide over him down underneath. Beautiful drop kick by Regal. Hooks that arm and drags him into the middle of the ring. Assassin number one gets to the corner and tags his partner, and he meets the same fate. And there's a tag on Guerrero over the top rope. Drops with both legs. Boy, what a thrilling team it is they are to watch, Guerrero and Regal. A couple of dandies. Surprising upset win over Ferris and Latham for the AWA title. Look at Guerrero. Drop kick and a beauty. And with all of that weight, that leverage, over and down goes the assassin. And look at Guerrero. Straight back. 
Dropping down on the arm of the assassin. Tag on Steve. Referee Jerry Calhoun. And Rigo with the elbow and before the arm is gone, he grabs it, hooks it up into a top wrist lock on the deck. Dandy. Big assassins, 590 pounds worth out of parts unknown. Assassin number two in the ring now with Steve Rigo. assassin into his partner's knee. Referee warning him about using the hair. Stay out of the hair. him back into the corner on the turnbuckles. And as the assassin started for the eye, Steve backed out of there. Assassin number one in the ring. Big. They can wrestle. Let me tell you, they can. Mmm. Regal on his knees. excellent condition and let me tell you this it has served them well in the matches we've seen them together and Regal kicks his way out and right back up facing the assassin we feel like when I say we, I mean my own personal opinion is, make that clear, the longer a bout goes, the better chance Regal and Guerrero have. They're in such great condition. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that say, well, a bout really uh, favors their suplex over and down, favors the big heavy guys. I don't think that. They'll wear some on Regal and Guerrero, but they have such great conditioning. Look at Regal on a backdrop. Boy, was he dumped high in the air. And that big leg, Regal in trouble. But the assassin may have let his chance get by him there. Instead of going for a pin, he opt to inflict some more punishment. Power driving slam into the mat on Steve Regal with that arm held in a hammer position. Tag, I think. No. He, yeah, he did. He tagged him. Guerrero takes the arm, pulls over. And he is pulled straight back down. And look at that exchange. Oh, oh. power elbow. And Regal coming after the assassin, too, who is going out of the ring. He did his damage before he left. Into the junior heavyweight class. He's down. He's about 205. And both of the assassins very large. for the single leg, but the tag had already been made. Hector down. 
Stretching that arm. He has a as the wrist bent over and holding Hector's arm out. Hector rolls up at right shoulder. Regal with his hand out, he'd like a tag. Both belts were at stake, but as it turned out, neither changed hands. Here's what happened. You'll recognize Lawler. He's on the receiving end of Bachwinkle's shots. Lawler into the corner, and the old king is just really about to expire right here as Bachwinkle applies the pressure. Now, watch this. Dave, what's this hold call? An atomic drop. An atomic drop, okay. <laughs> and Lawler's atomic drop out of the ring. Now, watch. Jimmy Hart. Sitting at ringside, Lawler's manager is about to encase his fist in a chain. There it is. And Bachwinkle, his head happens to be lying right there handily. And Jimmy Hart really blasts him. And Bachwinkle now is rolling over. And he is, for all intents and purposes, out of it. Now, Lawler comes in and is quick to take advantage of this stroke of good fortune. He crawls over to Bachwinkle. Now, watch Bachwinkle. Fox the king. There's one. Two, Bachwinkle slaps Lawler on the back, and he thinks it's over. He is giving the victory <laughs> a salute, but there it is now. Their heart comes in. Bachwinkle can't resist a couple of shots at Jimmy Hart. So Lawler again takes advantage of his good fortune to pick up the chain that happens to be lying there. He's about to give uh, Bachwinkle a shot, but Jerry Calhoun, the referee, interferes. Now, this is legal when a referee takes a chain away from a wrestler. Now, Calhoun is absolutely horrified that Lawler would have a chain, so he says, Jerry, is this your chain? Lawler denies it. Calhoun says it's all over. Lawler has been disqualified. Bachwinkle's hand is raised to victory. Because of the disqualification, the belts do not change hands. Now, in other matches last night, Steve Regal was the winner over Ken Wayne. Coco Ware defeated the Super Destroyer. It was Ellering and Robinson defeating the Assassins. And finally, King and Yamamoto defeated Morton and Big Red. And how about that for two champions? Head up. I was watching Bullwinkle over there. Bullwinkle? Bullwinkle. 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 I'll call him Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle. Don't call him Bullwinkle. He's a bully, and I'm going to call him Bullwinkle. <laughs> He'll call you Rocky the Squirrel. And you'll be sorry. I, want to know, I want to know what Jimmy Hart looked like after that. Boy, he, he really, really I don't know. Uh, Bachwinkle was taking a pretty good shot at Jimmy Hart, and Jimmy Hart is not a very 